Hello and welcome to our discussion on the preparation and understanding the financial statements. In this session we will prepare the cash flow statement when the balance sheet and income statements are given. In the previous session we saw that when a set of transactions are given it is possible to prepare and convert the business decisions into financial statements. When we say financial statement is a balance sheet, cash flow, and income statement. So when the balance sheet and income statement are given and the cash flow is not given, even if the transactions are not given or the business decisions are not given, one can prepare the cash flow statement because of the interrelationship between the balance sheet, income statement, and the cash flow statement. Let us take an example. So in this example, the balance sheet, the opening balance sheet, the closing balance sheet, and the income statement for the period are given. We can see that cash has changed from 47,000 to 45,600, but the details of the cash flow statement not given. Similarly, no transactions are given except an additional information that a plant has been sold, an equipment has been sold for at a book value for 25,000. So the transactions are also not given here. So it is possible by seeing the balance sheet and income statement, we can identify the cash inflows and cash outflows. For that we can start with a balance sheet or income statement and pick up one by one item and understand the relationship. Let us take with the revenue or income statement and move by taking picking up one by one item. Let us take revenue. Income statement is prepared by using the accrual system. So it is not necessary that the entire revenue will be the cash inflow. So let me put the opening balance sheet, balance of the cash in hand first. So since the revenue is given on accrual, we want to find the collection. We want to find the collection. So it is necessary to understand the changes in a debtor. So these are all working notes. So the opening debtor is 655,000. The closing debtor is 700,000 and the revenue for the period is 2. So therefore, opening plus revenue minus closing will give us the collection. So collection during the period, cash in flow, is 2136250. Is to repeat, I said that income statement is prepared by using the accrual system. The cash flow statement is prepared to find the actual cash flows. So it is possible to know the cash flows by observing the revenues and the changes in the data. So collection is revenues plus minus the changes in the data. Now cost of the goods sold. Whenever you compare the cost of goods sold, it relates to inventory and to understand how much money has been paid to the supplier because we purchase the goods from supplier. So it is necessary to see the creditors, inventory and the COGS together to find the payment to the suppliers. Payment to the supplier. So suppliers or the creditors, okay, payment to the creditors or supplier. For that it is necessary to observe, it is necessary to observe the creditors. So opening creditors is 510,000. The closing creditor is 530,000. The payment we don't know. Purchases we don't know. But we can find the purchases by understanding how much stock has been was there, the, how much stock is there, 
and what goods has been sold during the period so it will tell us the opening the purchases to be made or purchases that has been made during the period purchases is equal to the closing stock plus COGS minus the opening stock so that is a purchases during the period so this purchases we take that to the creditors assuming that that is a purchase on credit and then we can say the payments is equal to opening creditor plus purchases minus the closing creditor so the payments made during the period to the creditor is determined by understanding the understanding the changes in the creditors and changes in the stock so COGS is already taken care rent rent is an expense in order to find out whether the rent has been paid or not we have to see whether there is any outstanding or advance since there is no outstanding no advance the rent is a expense as well as the payment one two six one two zero six zero zero but if you see utilities utilities you have uh, the income statement shows an expense of sixty thousand three hundred fifty but utilities payable utilities payable is there in the balance sheet as an liability so in order to find out how much is the paid during the period so opening utility payable plus the utilities for the period minus the closing utilities is a utility paid during the period or in other word the payment for utilities is the expense plus minus the changes in the utility payable so expense is 60350 but the payment is 61600 then we'll see telephone expenses since no outstanding no advance there the entire telephone expense is a is a payment 6100 salary salary once again salary is an expense but the payment depends on the changes in the outstanding or advance here there is no advance so the salary is equal to payment uh, the expense plus minus the changes in the liability 649,750 the market expenses let me first take the market expenses then we'll see the depreciation the market expense also no outstanding so we paid entire 41,000 now let us see depreciation depreciation per se is a is a, a non cash item but it affects the cash flows in the form of purchase or the sale of or it will help in determining the purchase and sale of the assets during the period so the plant during the opening plant or equipment is 160,000 equipment is 160,000 the closing is given as 190,000 depreciation is given in the income statement as 20,000 and there is an equipment sold at the book value that means no profit no loss so when there is a sale there has to be a plant as an inflow the sale of plant or sale of equipment okay so I can write down as equipment there is um, and we sold it the cash we received cash 25,000 received cash 25,000 so purchases will be 190 plus sale plus depreciation minus the opening will give us the purchases of of equipment so equipment purchased during the period is uh, 75,000 we are treating that as a cash purchase 
because there is no liability on the balance sheet which reflects 75,000. Therefore, entire purchases of equipment has been shown as an, uh, as an outflow of cash. So to repeat, in order to purchase, in order to find out the money paid for the purchases, it is necessary to see the opening, closing, depreciation and the sale, so the balancing figure is the purchases. So depreciation is also done. Interest. Interest is an expense and but whether we paid or not it depends on whether there is any outstanding interest or interest payable so we can see that there is no interest payable so entire interest is a outflow too similarly with respect to tax since there is a tax payable is an outstanding there or a liability there so the tax payment is the expense plus minus the change in the liability plus minus the change in the liability so the tax payment is 57,150 whereas the tax paid tax as an expense is 57,300 so the total of expenses the total of ex the total of outflow the total of inflow is 2 uh, 2.2 million the total of outflow will be equal to 2.12 uh, we can check once again creditor 1 uh, rent 120 utilities 61 salaries 6497500 marketing expenses 41 equipment 75000 Telephone expenses 6,100, interest 9,000, taxes 57,000, and uh, then we can we can observe one more item. We can see that during this period, the retained earnings. Maybe it is necessary to prepare a retained earnings working note. So and observe whether retained earnings has changed during this period or not. If there is a change, there may be a payment of dividend. So the retained earning add the current profit. So current profit is 106 less the closing payment, the closing retained earnings. The closing retained earnings is 226. So we can see that that is a payment has been happened and we call that as a dividend. And this dividend can be cash dividend or the dividend can be stock dividend. But in this case, we can comfortably assume it to be a cash dividend because the capital during this period did not change. So the dividend is also a payment and so dividend is appropriation and the payment, okay, so dividend is... Um, so the total payments is one okay so the total payment is 2145 and um, total inflow is okay so twenty five forty seven uh, 61, 6,100, uh, 41,000, 75,000, interest 9,000, tax 57,000, then you have, uh, then you have, then you also have, we can see there is a loan, loan has reduced from 175 to 154, so cash in cash outflows is uh, 263 and cash in hand is 2 so cash in hand is 45,000 which is given on the balance sheet 45,000 to recap when a set of balance sheet and income statement are given it is possible to find the, the cash in hand it is possible to prepare the cash flow statement 
but to prepare the cash flow statement it is necessary to understand the relationships between these items which we which we did in the form of the working notes but this cash flow statement shows the receipts and payment so let us find the cash from operation the cash from operation is collection minus the creditor minus the rent minus the utilities minus the telephone minus the salary minus the equipment minus the tax okay so cash from operation is 94600 is operating inflow minus operating outflows cash from financing there is no inflow from financing but there is an outflow in the form of interest in the form of interest and in the form of dividend so therefore cash from operation cash from financing is uh, cash from financing will be and we can see that once again cash from financing will be uh, interest minus the dividend minus the loan so therefore cash from financing is a negative 47,000 no inflow only outflows in the form of interest dividend and the loans cash from investment there is an inflow of the sale of equipment minus the sale of purchase of equipment so therefore it is 50,000 if you sum this up we should get the cash in hand closing so this cash flow statement shows the receipts and payment whereas this cash flow statement shows CFO CFF and CFI but still we have a question in our mind which we said here why is cash from operation not same as profit the cash from operation is 94,000 whereas the profit after tax is 106,000 and cash from operation is not same as the uh, uh, is not same as the um, CFO because of non cash items because of non operating items and because of the credit uh, items which are also called the working capital items so let us see that so cash from operation here can be determined by picking up the the pat so pat is 106000 we add the non cash items so the non cash items are uh, non cash items are depreciation so depreciation we add back 20,000 non operating items we add back that is interest we add back interest and um, so non cash and non operating taken care then we say that working capital changes and the working capital changes are the debtors and what happened to the debtor we can see that debtors have increased when the debtors have increased that means we purchase the goods we sold the goods on credit so no cash flow similarly inventory inventory has increased so that means we purchase the goods which we have not used in the current period no other current assets so we'll go to the creditors current liabilities the creditors has decree increase so that means we did not pay money we purchased the goods on credit so it is plus 20,000 utilities utilities the utilities payable has increased so utilities payable is increased that means to that extent or decrease rather uh, so to that extent we paid extra during this period salary payable we can see the salary payable has also increased salary payable uh, salary payable was uh, 9750 
increased to. So there is a credit transaction. So it did not pay that money. So therefore, this will be an addition. The IT payable, IT payable, it was increased. So we did not pay full expense during the period. So there is an there is an addition of hundred fifty thousand. So if we sum this up, we should get the cash from operation, and the cash from operation is ninety four thousand and ninety four thousand six hundred fifty is a cash from operation either way whether you find from direct or indirect method to recap the cash from operation in a direct method will tell us the inflows and outflows whereas the cash from indirect will tell us why is the profit not same as profit is not same as the you know, profit is not same as the cash from operation because of non cash because of non operating and because of the changes in the working capital because of the changes in the working capital so the direct method will tell us the direct method will will show the cash flows inflows and outflows where the indirect method makes an adjustment for the non cash items non operating items and the changes in the working capital so to recap i say that if the balance sheet opening and closing given income statement given one can find the cash from opera, uh, cash flow statement and the cash flow statement can be determined by finding the receipts and payment or can be cash flow statement can be prepared by showing cfo cff cfi and cash from operation can be determined by using the direct or indirect method too.